Okay, so now that we, you know what we have in store for you by viewing our certification and training video, let's go ahead and introduce you to the Compass Control System properly, shall we? Because you need to be able to compare and contrast this to the control systems that you have researched and perhaps worked with already because there's nothing else quite like Compass Control and I'm sure that you'll enjoy the benefits. So Compass Control is the IP-based control system for modern system integration. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, you know that it's a young product. However, you also know that Key Digital is not a young company. We've been around since 1999. So unlike a lot of app-based control systems that really have no hardware, have no sales, and they're really just an app, right? Which, let's face it, there are free apps out there that control IP devices, um, but it's the hardware that makes it. Key Digital is a hardware and a software company. It makes a package unlike anything else. And we actually treat the age of the Compass Control System, again, released in 2012, as a benefit to you. Well, what does that mean? See, we released Compass Control and we researched and developed Compass Control at a time that we knew network was where this thing needed to live. It needed to be on the network, not radio frequencies. And as a result, Compass Control doesn't put you, the installer, the AV integrator, in that in between that rock and the hard place of an RF-based system in a network-based world, right? So we know it had to be network-based and furthermore, we decided to utilize the smart device and at the time of release, that was iOS as the brain. Each and every touch screen, your iOS and now your Android device, is the brain to the system, which is brilliant because there are no other processors in the market quite like Apple devices. Even when Apple, for example, was struggling as a company, who used those Apple computers? The people that needed processing power, that's who. The folks editing videos, the folks editing audio. And so we utilize those smart devices at the brain as the brain of the compass control system. And they all live on the network, okay? I'm talking about the master controllers with the IR, RS-232 and voltage ports that we'll introduce you to. And we're talking about the control devices, the smart devices, iPads, iPhones, iPod Touch, Android tablets, Android phones across all this variety of sizing, for example, they all live on the network and they just occupy an IP address as do the hardware, and so they get to talk over the network. And because of that, there's actually an unlimited amount of controllers possible. So unlike other control systems that do have apps, we don't have a limitation because the devices themselves are the brain. They're, they don't have to speak to a master, which then informs the various components what to do. So you could have as many tablets, as many uh, phone devices, as you'd like in your system, as long as there are available IP addresses, of course. So it's essentially infinite, uh, which is something that you'll see on the C1 exam. Now, because it's all network-based, you can also speak to one job site using your data plan, uh, you know, when you're out and about, or you can uh, have a static IP address on site, which allows you to control your system and monitor your system. So for example, uh, you want to monitor your thermostat and then before you head home, you want to uh, raise the temperature a little bit in the winter time, but you don't want that running at that high temperature all day long, therefore increasing efficiency, right? So there are no master, no slave controllers, meaning the iPad and the Android device doesn't have to talk to only one master controller and then forward the uh, information. So here's an example of that. So in this system, we have two master controllers and they've been assigned IP addresses, 10.2.10.217 and 10.2.10.218. Uh, master controller one 
has connected devices A, B, C, and D. Master Controller 2 has connected devices E, F, G, and H. And this could be two master controllers in a rack, or this could be a system where uh, you have one master controller in one conference room, perhaps in some furniture, and then another master controller in a second conference room in its furniture, yet the iOS device or the smart device is able to control both as long as they're on the same network here, for example. And <clears throat> the reason that's all possible without any master master controller or any slave devices is because you'll do your programming in our compass navigator you're going to build what's called a control tree now that control tree tells us oh on 10.2.10.2.18 here's the devices connected to it a b c and, uh, or e f g and h and if i want to control those devices i just talk to master controller 2 which is 10.2.10.218. Uh, .2 However, if I want to control A through D, the iPad knows because this information of the programming gets loaded into it that it needs to talk to master controller one. So it's quite brilliant that way. And of course, very, very fast as a result. But the real benefit of having a system that works like this is that <clears throat> when you have IP controlled devices in your system, which of course, is an increasing amount of devices uh, at the time of this recording. You, um, when you have those IP devices, the iOS device gets to speak directly to those. So the program, as programmed on the PC computer, gives all the information it needs to know uh, into the iPad, and the iPad knows, okay, these are devices that are not connected, not IR, not RS-232, they're not connected to my master controller, and my Lutron system here, for example, is at 192.168.1.80. When I control it, the master controller, excuse me, the iPad speaks directly to it. If I want to speak di bidirectionally to my Denon Heos, it is able to do that directly over the network without a master controller in the middle. Roku video streamer, surveillance, RTSP streaming from your network uh, surveillance cameras or even NVRs is all done directly. Now, that said, of course, Compass Control also gives you the option to uh, execute commands off of its network port on a master controller, which we'll so show you in our hardware section of our video. Um, and that's useful if you have a device that you need to control that perhaps only supports a sing single socket. Um, so sometimes that occurs. So the essentially, you're looking at the ability to have an an infinite amount of TCP IP controllable devices without utilizing a single port on a master controller, that is gonna to translate to huge savings, making Compass Control such a competitively priced product that you will love this system. It will win you more jobs than ever before as compared to the um, the leaders in the control industry in their high price points. So it's a huge, huge benefit. And of course, you always need one master controller though. We should preface, preface that by saying this. Now, <clears throat> because again, it is an IP controlled uh, or an IP based system with a smart device brain, your bi-directional information can also occur uh, from the master controller to the smart device, right? If it's an RS-232 device, for example, the master controller uh, parses some information from it and it relays the value of those variables, the volume levels, the lighting levels, on or off, that kind of information to the iPad where the iPad then uh, adjusts its GUI. So all of the GUI events, all of the variable values, all of the, even the RS-232 IR burst information and TCP IP commands can live in that iPad and there's more, they can also speak controller to controller. So a new form of bidirectional communication is possible because we have the brain in each and every smart device controller. And for that, we'll show you a quick video. And in this video, what we see is two iOS devices controlling a DBX Zone Pro, which doesn't actually have a bi-directional driver. And we see some status 
for example, the power of the audio system and all the zones. And now on the other iPad, we see that the GUI is updated. But look how immediate this is from going from red to green. Now this isn't true feedback from that device, but if your control is working, then this should be accurate and this should be true. So we see that the audio system is on um, or off, indicated by a red or green power icon. And we also see, for example, what else should be sh known globally across the system? What is the source that <clears throat> each zone is listening to? Here, it's been programmed custom. So we see the pro here, programming pro so that the button turns blue, the text and the icon becomes a little bigger and you see it is immediate from both iPads because they're just speaking over the network to each other. And here's the cherry on top, which is the volume control slider. Again, custom programming here. We allow you to even um, make a volume slider out of uh, images, two images of a beer glass because um, a volume slider has a minimum and a maximum image. You could uh, pull that slider or you could use your press and minus buttons to incrementally raise or lower that volume level. And so you see how immediate that is. And that's through these iPads communicating over the network and a simple setting of a variable in Compass Navigator, which we'll get into in the software section of this C1 setting that variable's value to be a global value. The, 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 the audio volume is set to this is something that all of your controllers should know about. And so you see right now compass control and the benefit of having a control system that is IP based, network based, and, um, <clears throat> and uses the smart devices as the brain. And for that reason, we at Key Digital and many others are beginning to call this the most modern control system available in the market. See, we have partnered with the leaders in the industry that are the best at doing what they do and they have the most modern devices out there as well. This covers all categories of integration and automation, lighting, thermostat, security, uh, and surveillance, uh, audio, visual, of course, we make these bi-directional drivers, we implement them into our compass control modules and it becomes drag and drop. And this is a list of the brands that we're partnered with. But again, take a look as we showed you in the benefits of your C1 certification at the devices, the models from these brands that we have, and you'll see these are the newest products out there. This allows you to be more competitively priced um, versus the larger control system companies that want to sell you all of their products. And really they want to force upon you all of their products because you get to have more flexibility by uh, us partnering with a good, better and best, if you will, in different price points and different feature set products out there. So you'll want to, again, check out that bi-directional control modules pace, uh, page that you'll have access to after completing your C1 credentials. <clears throat> now, a lot of those brands, you have to go to their trainings in order to learn how to program those systems. For example, the automation products, Radio Raw 2 and Homeworks from Lutron and the HAI security and automation product from Leviton. Um, now, we want to make your life as easy as possible. One of the huge benefits of compass control and being such a modern system is we've made these bi-directional drivers that, so that you're set up to program that Lutron Radio Raw 2 system, program that Leviton security and automation system, and we can extract, extrapolate the report of those projects. So your Lutron Radio Raw 2, for example, you use the web browser method of um, collecting the XML report from that finalized program and then you get to bring it into compass control just by finding that XML that's saved locally on your computer and importing it into the compass system. We're going to have graphical pages. We're going to have bi-directional feedback showing on these elements and we're going to have full control of all of your lighting devices, your thermostat devices, 
your shades we support as well. Um, <clears throat> and in the case of Leviton Security and Automation, of course, even the zone statuses of your door, uh, your security uh, systems and that sort of thing. So it's a huge, huge benefit. It enables you essentially to program compass control once and once only, uh, not having to uh, program things uh, redundantly in Lutron and in Compass. So what are those variables that I mentioned before that allow us to really make a custom uh, interface do move, shake, dance, and control exactly as you want it. Well, these are the discussions for the programming pros. We support variables, integer, string, Boolean, and floating, but these variables aren't just a place that you could store value. You can even place events and actions on a variable, like we show you at the bottom center of the Compass Navigator software here. You can place a change value event. Um, as the value of a variable changes from one to two, in the case of an integer, two back to one, one to 10, whatever it may be, um, these events can run through. So your variables in Compass Control become three dimensional, okay? Their values can dictate the graphical uh, interface and the feedback that your user gets from how they are manipulating the system. Integer, string, that's all ASCII characters and symbols and whatnot. Boolean, true, false, floating, that's uh, numerical value with decimal places. They're all supported. Uh, globally, as I showed in the example of the volume control uh, sliders where they move up and down on the screen in that video a moment ago, um, meaning that, okay, what is the, we'll create a variable that can store the value for volume in zone five. And all of your iOS and Android controllers should know that, right? Well, what about local, a variable such as I'm in zone one, selected zone, selected zone equals one, selected zone equals two, selected zone equals three on one of your iOS or Android controllers, whereas it can equal eight on the other controller, you might be in zone eight, right? So variables like that can be dictated to be local. You could have the events and actions on the variables. We support indexing and array variables as well. And talking about pro, that is some high level stuff, but it really increases your efficiency in programming. So if you're a high level programming pro, you're gonna wanna get into that. And all of our bi-directional drivers, um, another advanced topic, they're written in basic C. Now there are a few key digital nuances. And once you gain your C3 certification and tell us you wanna see documentation on indexing arrays, bi-directional driver development, just let us know and we have that for you. So that does it. This has been the system introduction of Compass Control. I hope that helps get you geared up for understanding what Compass Control is, thinking about how you're going to implement that, and perhaps contrasting it to uh, some of the systems you've worked with in your past.